Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU Radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. In the previous set of lectures, we have taken a look at error control codes. In particular, we took a close look at the parity check code, the, wherein the parity of the code word was forced to be even parity, meaning it contained an even number of ones and we looked at the repetition code. So if you take a particular bit and repeat it three times or five times, we saw that that resulted in a much lower probability of error on the binary symmetric channel. But the price we paid was that the parity check code could not correct errors, it could only detect a single error, while the repetition code could correct errors, but it was very inefficient to use because of the low rate that it provided. To generalize our discussion on codes, in this lecture, we are going to take a look at linear block codes. And linear block codes are very commonly used error control mechanisms and they form a building block for many practical error com control codes as well. In particular, we will see the Hamming code a little closely in further lectures. Let us now look at the definition of a linear block code. A linear block code requires two parameters to specify it, n and k. So you take a block of k bits that is you take your sequence of bits, take a block of k bits and then you map them to n bits where n is typically more than k using a binary linear transformation. <coughs> the fact that you are performing a linear transformation is very powerful because it allows you to implement these operations effectively in software and hardware. The nomenclature we use, we have already been using this kind of nomenclature is that of nk binary code and an nk binary code has rate k upon n. To implement these, we can use matrix techniques because it's a linear code, you will see that we can actually implement these using matrix multiplication with modulo 2 addition of course to implement the features. There are several useful results from linear algebra, for example those of vector spaces that come in handy. While we will not discuss these in detail, I will mention some useful properties as and when required so that it becomes easy for you to understand. Finally, as mentioned, because of the fact that these are bits we, and you know operating on uh, the, a field consisting of 0 and 1, the addition and multiplication operations are respectively XOR and 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 therefore these are easy to implement using logical gates or even in software very, very efficiently. So let us just understand what a linear block code does. You have an nk linear block code that maps 2 power k k length binary sequences to 2 power k n length binary sequences. That is, if you take a block of k information bits, the total number of possible sequences that you can construct is 2 power k. These get mapped to 2 power k n length sequences where n is larger than or equal to k, therefore there is redundancy added. For convenience, we denote the k length message sequence as a k sized column vector m and the n length, uh, say, n, and the n length coded column vector as x. That is, you take the message, express it as a column vector and the coded vector, which is x, is also an n length column vector. So the k length column vector gives rise to an n length column vector after performing the coding operation. Now naturally because we have this linear code, we can express this transformation as a linear transformation in the field of 0 and 1 ones. That means we can define a generator matrix G. The generator matrix G by convention however is defined in the transpose sense that is it has k rows and n columns. So you, if you pre-multiply by the vector m expressed as a row, which is why I have written m transpose, you get x transpose. And the entries of g are zeros and ones and each row is a code word. Let us understand what this transformation is doing. g is generally expressed in this way as a fat matrix, meaning it has k rows and n columns. Each of the rows consists of something like a code word of this code because if you express, if you take m as 1000 0, 0, 0, or 0100, 0, 0, it picks out that particular row, each of those are code words. Because m can take 
2 power k possible values, m transpose g can take a maximum of 2 power k possible values, of course, if you take, if you have some linearly dependent rows or things like that, you may get less, but let us ignore that for now. So, if you carefully construct g, you will get x. For every m, you will get an x. And this x has enough redundancy so that even when there are errors, you may be able to reconstruct them or you may be able to, you may be able to detect some errors. That is the key. But let us understand this a little more practically before going into the actual mechanics of how you can use this generator matrix. Let us look at some examples that you have seen already. So, let us first start with our favorite examples, the 3-2 parity check code and the 3-1 repetition code. Yeah. So, let us look at these. So, if you look at the If you look at the parity check code, okay, we will actually write down all the elements of the parity check code. It is 0, 0, 2. because we want even parity, it is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, this code, it turns out is a linear flow. Of course, it is a block code because you take blocks of 2 bits and map them to 3 bits. We saw that in the previous lecture. But this is a linear block code. Why? The reason is because we will show that you can construct a G matrix and use M's, that is 2 length bit M's to generate all these code words. Let us see. To construct G for this particular code word, what we will do is, the easiest way is to take some 2 linearly independent code words, so to speak. 0, 0, 0 is a trivial quantity. It is, you know, you cannot really multiply it to get anything useful because if you multiply anything by 0, 0, 0, you get 0, 0, 0. So, let us actually define our G using any approaches. I am going to take the second and third rows. Let us say I write it as 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. I took this, this one and this one. Let us now use the definition, we have k is equal to 2, so m is a 2 length column vector. Let us evaluate m transpose g for every m. I am going to write m as rows, so let us say 0, 0. m transpose g is what? You multiply 0 times 1, 0, 1 and add 0 times 0, 1, 1 and you get 0, 0, 0. Next, we multiply 0, 1. If you take 0, 1, what do you get? It picks out the second row, you get 0, 1, 1. If you take 1, 0, it picks out the first row, so you get 1, 0, 1. Finally, if you take 1, 1, it adds these two rows and you end up getting 1, 1, 0. Now, what did we conclude over here? So, there are many things. The first, the n length 0 vector is always a code word of any linear block code. Why? Because choosing m as 0 always results in the z n length 0 vector because that is a property of the linear transformation. Therefore, the n length 0, n length 0 code word is always an element of the linear block code. That is the first thing. The second thing, if you look at these, these are the same as these. In other words, you are able to construct all your code words using this generator matrix G. This generator matrix G, therefore, is a valid generator matrix for this code word. Okay, great. Now, the mapping is 0, 0. <coughs> this is one mapping of, you know, M to M transpose G. That is something which you have. The one other question which I have is, of course, you saw that any linear combination of the rows of G is also a code word because you took 1, 0, 0, 1 and 1, 1, you got code words. Now, is this G unique? Well, it turns out that this G is not necessarily unique because let us actually take a different G as an example. Let us take G to be, for fun, let us take it to be 1, 0, 1 and 1, 1, 0. You can show that, you know, these two are linearly dependent because you cannot just multiply the first and get the second, okay. You cannot just 
uh, add them up and get zero. So these are linearly independent. Let us actually evaluate m and m transpose g for this. Again, I write 0, 0 conveniently. I am not writing the full form 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If you take 0, 0, you get 0, 0, 0. Great. If you take 0, 1, you get 1, 1, 0. If you take 1, 0, you get 1, 0, 1. If you take 1, 1, you get 1, 1, 1. If you in, you look at this enumeration, you get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is here. 0 for 0, 1, I will get 1, 1, 1. Yeah. And 1, 0, 1 is fine. And for 1, 1, I get, yeah, okay. So now if you enumerate, if you look at compare the comparison, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. <coughs> 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, this is another equivalent generator matrix for this code. But there is a slight difference. Look at the mapping from the messages to the coded vectors. In this case, 0, 1 became 0, 1, 1. This came 0, 1 became 1, 1, 1. This came 1, 0 became 1, 0, 1. 1, 0 remained at 1, 0, 1. 1, 1 was 1, 1, 0 here. 1, 1 is 0, 1, 1 here. So <coughs> the mapping between the messages and the coded vectors is different here. However, in terms of error performance or all other metrics, these two codes are equivalent. They are an equivalent code. Okay? So you can actually come up with multiple equivalent realizations of the code. This is something you have to bear in mind. So, so for example, sometimes some people may say, this is a 7-4 Hamming code and give you some generator matrix. I will then come up with 7-4 Hamming code and give you a different generator matrix which may have a different mapping. Nevertheless, they are the same or equivalent code. That doesn't matter because the mapping between the messages and the mem transposes can be looked at as a table lookup and you can always correct for it. So a couple of things to note are, you can always just swap the rows and this is something I'm not proving. You can also swap the columns of G without losing any performance. The zero vector is always a code word. Okay. Now one thing to remember is when you construct the generator matrix, you should take some linearly independent code words. Do not take 0, 0, 0 you will not get all the code words because 0, 0, 0 should not be a row of the G if you want a non-trivial code. Okay? The next thing we are going to do is we are going to look at the N1 let us take 3, 1. Okay? The generator matrix is very simple because if you have a one repetition code your M is a one element vector. So G has to have only one row. This is the only G that you can come up with. Because if you now take M, M is actually 0 or 1. Since M is 0 or 1, M transpose G is either 0, 0, 0 or 1, 1, 1. So for the N1 repetition code, the G is of this form. Okay. So this is actually very, very uh, simple if you think about it. So if, you, if I ask you for an N1 repetition code, the generator matrix is just a row consisting of N1s because you're just going to multiply this by zero or multiply this by one and you get the two code words because the N1 code has two power one equal to two code words. So the exercise is generate all code words and check the above Gs. We just did that. And one other exercise is try to enumerate all possible generator matrices that are equivalent for this linear block code. <coughs> now, now one thing is that see, how can we check whether the channel output is a valid code word? So one thing you can do is, you can go through all possible M transpose G's and then when the receiver you get any N block sequence, you can keep checking whether it is one of those, one of those, one of the, one of the code words. If it is not a code word, then you have to do something. But this kind of comparison with each code word is not efficient. It's not the right thing to do because you have some interesting properties by virtue of this being a linear code. So in other words, whenever you receive an N bit sequence, it is not a good idea to check this n bit sequence against all 2 power k code words to check which message it corresponded to. In fact, you should find out whether this is the code word by performing a linear operation. The hint I am going to give you is that 
Since the code words were generated by taking linear combinations of the rows of G, all you need to do is to verify whether you are definitely in the linear combinations of the rows of G. By doing, by, you know, to do that you can always come up with a so called check and this kind of check is done by using a parity check matrix. This parity check matrix is a pair matrix like G and H come in pairs. Whenever you generate your, mess, your coded, coded words, that is code words using G, there is a corresponding H that will check whether indeed this particular n bit vector is a code word of this code. Not surprisingly, one way to think about it is you have a total of 2 power n possible n length sequences. But only 2 power k of them are valid code words and these 2 power k form a vector space. Now, what you can do is the remaining 2 power n minus k are not code words, right? So, you can come up with a way to check this property using h. So, the h is a matrix of size n minus k cross n such that h m is 0 for all valid code words. That is, you need to come up with n length, you know, strings who which have 0 inner product with all the code words. This is the one way to look at it. Another way to think about it is H times G transpose yields the 0 matrix, okay? So how, how does this work and why does this actually function well? Let us actually perform an exercise and try to intuitively guess the parity check matrices for the repetition code and our parity check code, okay? So let us look at the parity check code and we will take this particular version of G. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We want, so this in this case is a 3, 2 code. N is equal to 3 k is equal to 2. Now, h is n minus k rows n columns, n minus k is 1. This h, okay, should be 0 for all valid code words. So, in other words, you want h times 0, 0, 0 is 0, that is fine. h times 1, 0, 1 should be 0. h times 0, 1, 1 should be 0 and you want h times uh, if you add these 1 1 0 to be 0. So, you want a parity check matrix that satisfies this. Now, how will you get such a parity check matrix? Now, we will try to guess. Okay. So, we let us let h see h is going to be a binary matrix. So, we can basically have entries a, b, c. Okay. Now, what does the first equation tell you? A plus C, remember XOR is 0. Okay. The second equation over here says B plus C is 0 and the third equation says A plus B is 0. So, we need to just come up with A, B and C that satisfy this. Right? So, we need to come up with just A, B and C that satisfy this condition. Okay. Now, one way to do it is to guess. Okay. Now, one guess I will make is that if I guess that h is equal to 1, 1, 1, does that satisfy this condition? 1 plus 1 is 0, 1 plus 1 is 0 in the binary sense, 1 plus 1 is 0, 1 plus 1 is 0. I am guessing that 1, 1, 1 is the parity check matrix. Let us check. So, remember our code words are I am ignoring 0, 0, 0 because that is always going to give you 0. This is 0, 1, 1. What do you get? 0 plus 1 plus 1, 0. If you do 1, 0, 1, sorry, that gives you 0. Great. And do I need to check for 1, 1, 0? No, because if I just add this one and this one, I get 110 and I can check it or 110 is going to add the first two 
and I get it. So in other words, for the 3, 2 parity check matrix, 1, 1, 1 is the parity, 3, 2 parity check code, 1, 1, 1 is the parity check matrix. So H is equal to 1, 1, 1 is the parity check matrix. You can also verify that H times G transpose is 0. So what is our G over here? Our G is 1, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 1. So if you take 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, you get 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0, 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1 is 0, 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 is 0. So this indeed is the parity check matrix of the code. Okay. So what size should this be? See this is n minus k cross n and this is g is originally k cross n, this is n cross k. So this should be n minus k cross k 0 matrix. And that is indeed the case. Let us actually repeat this for our repetition code. Let us say 1, 1, 1. We want a parity check matrix. For this, right, let us actually take the approach of finding a H such that G transpose, sorry, HG transpose is 0. So N is equal to 3, K is equal to 1. So my H has to be a N minus 1, 2 cross 3 binary matrix. Right? So I need a 2 cross 3 binary matrix. Now I want H G transpose is 0. That means H times 1, 1, 1 should be equal to what is the 0 size? So remember this is n minus k cross n. This is sorry, this is n minus k cross n. This is n cross k. So this is n minus k cross k. In our case, it is 2 cross 1. So we want 0, 0. We want something like this. Okay. So now how do we get it? What H do I choose? Okay. Now it turns out that the parity check code I chose earlier and the uh, gender, you know, and the uh, repetition code I am choosing, they are very connected. So if you just use the same approach, you know, to say I want to, you know, I will choose the entries as A, B, C, D, E, F and things like that and work it out, you will find that the H is actually the generator matrix of the parity check code there. But let us actually not do it that way. Let us do it using a more systematic approach. See, if you want H, G transpose to be 0, you need to now choose, okay, two rows such that their inner product with H are 0. So I can always just guess. So let's say that 1, 0, 1 and 0, 1, 1 are my rows. So you can check that if I choose my H in this manner, this will satisfy this condition. 1, 0, 1 times 1, 1, 1 is 0. 0, 1, 1 times 1, 1, 1 is 0. Also, this is not the unique H. You can also choose 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. This will also work. So once again, you can verify that the H is not unique, okay. There are multiple equivalent H's, all H's are equally, you know, usable. You can always come up with linear combinations of the rows and come up with different H's. So this, it turns out, is the parity check matrix for the code. How did I get this? If you want to do it systematically for a small case, you can always just write them as A, B, C, D, E, F and then write down those equations. You will get the equations which you can solve. Basically, you will get something like A plus B plus C is 0, C, D, e, D plus E plus F is 0 and you can always just substitute some values and guess that this is indeed the correct solution. So now, in this manner, we are able to come up with parity check matrix. And the reason it is n minus k cross n is because this n minus k is indicative of the vector space elements that are not in the k. So it is like you are partitioning your 2 power n into 2 power k and 2 power n minus k. That is the reason why it is um, you know, n minus k cross n and in fact there is another result that says that these codes are duals of each other and there is a big literature around how you can use this geometry to good effect. Intuitively we want to construct a parity check matrix and this parity check matrix is very very useful to check whether your code word is correct without having to do the comparison with all the g's all the M transpose G's. So you can always just go through what we just did and 
we just did this. What three length sequence yields zero in the zero inner product one zero one and zero one one? We found that it is one one one. Of course, zero 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 is trivial. Do not take that. If y is an n cross one received vector from the channel, now here is the interesting part. Any one bit error will lead to h y is equal to one, which is not zero. Why? Because if you now look at the h that we chose one one one, right? It should have even parity, right? But if only one bit is flipped, okay, one zero one zero one one or one one zero or a zero zero one, any of these, even if one bit is flipped, if you multiply by this h, one 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 by the received code word, you will get one. So the parity check matrix has a so the parity code has a parity check matrix. If you multiply the received code word with this h, if only one bit error has occurred, you will always get one. So multiplying with the parity check matrix signals that a bit error has occurred. So this indeed is an interesting way by which you can detect the errors. Of course, intuitively what you are doing is just XORing the uh, code uh, codes bits and checking that the parity is 0. If it is 1, then you can say that one bit has, ha, error has occurred. Of course, as I remember, as you remember in the previous lecture, if two bits, two bit errors have occurred or all three bits are flipped, then of course this fails. But still, if only one bit error has occurred, then this will correctly tell you that one bit error has occurred. Similarly, if you take the 3 1 repetition code as we just saw, the generator matrix is 1 1 1 and this is one of the equivalent parity check matrices. You can of course check that all proper code words yield hx is equal to 0. So, 1 bit error okay, directly yields the column with which the error has occurred. How? See, here is the interesting part. If you take h as 1 0 1 and 0 1 1, if you then post multiply, if you then post multiply by any code word. So, what are the code words? The code words are 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Okay. Let us actually just do this. So, this is the So, if you take this Okay, sorry. If you take the parity check matrix in this manner And let us say that you send 0, 0, 0, but one bit error has occurred. What do you get? You get 1, this picks out the middle column, 0, 1. 0, 1, if you read it in binary, is 1. So if you basically label this as 0, label this as 1, label this as 2, this indicates that a bit error has occurred in the second bit, which is indeed the case. And this is not magic. Let us try something like And let us say you sent 1, 1, 1, but the first bit was flipped. Okay, 0, okay. I, my labeling is probably incorrect, but it is okay. Uh, maybe I will just change this, change this labeling to this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. Yes, because you read 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay. So now if you lose this approach, 0, 1, 1 picks out the sum of picks out the sum of these two and I get 1, 0. 1, 0 indicates that the column corresponding to 1, 0 has an error, which means the error is in this particular place and flipping it gives, gives you the correct code word. So, in this manner, using a repetition codes parity check matrix, just by finding out the result 0, 1, that corresponds to the column where the error has occurred and that flipping that bit will give you a valid code word. So, this is something that will come in handy. If you design your parity check code such that it has a nice parity check matrix, finding out h times whatever it is received will give you the parity and uh, will rather will give you the column or a combination of columns of the parity check matrix that will tell you the exact location where the error has occurred and you can flip that to get the code word and use that to find out which k bit message was sent. Therefore, this confirms that your Repetition code can correct one bit error reliably. So, as we saw, for these linear codes, by multiplying by the received block of n, you know, n bits, you can easily find out whether you have a valid code word. But if it is not a valid code word, both, you know, multiplying by h gives you a non-zero element, and this non-zero element can tell you what the error is, assuming that an error has occurred, a detectable error has occurred. 
Let us take a closer look at the 3-1 repetition code as we just saw. All possible single bit error vectors are 100, 010, 001 and with the respective h times the error being 1001 or 11. This is for the parity check matrix that we saw earlier. If you take any of your code words x which is basically 000 or 111 written as a column vector, I am writing it for convenience in this manner. For an error pattern E with Y is equal to X plus E. So X is either 000 or 111. Now one thing you saw that whether I sent 000 or 111, H times Y always gave you the correct location of the error. Correct, you know, H times E. Why? The reason is because if you calculate S defined as HY, S is also called syndrome, HY is equal to H times X plus E. And because this is a linear operation, you can write it as HX plus HE. Now you know that HX is 0 for a valid code word because when you multiply X, when you multiply H by 0, 0, 0 or 1, 1, 1, you get 0. So you get only HE as a result. Therefore, whenever you have any linear block code, multiplying H by the parity check matrix gives you the same error pattern irrespective of the code word that you sent. In other words, whether you send 000 or 111, if the error pattern is the same, H times Y will be the same value. That is, irrespective of what code word you choose, the syndrome or HY depends only on the error pattern. This is the neat kind of uh, result that we are going to use when we discuss single error correcting codes called Hamming codes in the next lecture, where we are going to use the syndrome to correct errors. So to summarize, in terms of any error correcting code, but in this lecture about block codes, redundancy in the bits can help detect and correct errors. And in particular, we took the binary symmetric channel as our model and it's a simple but practical model for handling errors in digital communication systems. As I discussed with you, you can take BPSK over AWGN as one of the typical use cases of the binary symmetric channel. Then we discuss the basic concepts of linear error correction and detection, linear error detection and correction and we, gen we basically gave some very simple example of linear block codes that can be used to detect and correct errors. Of course, we also discussed that whenever you take from k blocks to n blocks, you are incurring an overhead. In fact, out of those n bits, only k correspond to information bits and the n minus k are redundancy and this n minus k upon n is to be thought of as a redundancy. So the rate of the code is k upon n. You want this to be as high as possible, but of course, you have to pay a price for the redundancy. In the next lecture, we will continue our discussion on error control codes and in particular, we will look closely at the so-called Hamming code. Thank you.